THM The Show presents me, Pablo Gunner, and my guests right here from the podcast that wouldn't die. What's up? This is Kevin. And this is Aaron. We're here to talk nerdy to me. We're going to talk nerdy to each other about nerdy things, of course. We got some Quantumania... Some Bad Batch, The Last of Us, HBO Show, and Mandalorian, right? And then just whatever nerdy stuff happens. I, I, I know I haven't seen The Bad Batch. I gotta be honest with you, but I'm, I'm down for, uh, for pretty much anything you can sling at us. No okay. question. Well, I, I won't spoil anything then. I'll just say like... <laughs> Please don't. I'll just say that Bad Batch, it's season two. I feel like this season wasn't as good as the first season. I'd, I'd have to rewatch it, but... May, or maybe it was similar to the first season where it just kind of seems like random episodes and then it comes together somehow well in the finale or two-part finale. Okay, it makes sense how we got here, but it was just kind of like all over the place on the way. It didn't seem like it was connecting along the way that much. There'd just be like little snippets. And then when you got there, you go like, okay, I see how they did it. I feel like I feel like it could have... They could have found a way to do it better, but it was still done well. You know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad batch? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Aaron doesn't know what we're talking about. This is Star Wars shit. Yeah, Star Wars. Uh, yeah, just, yeah. That's, that's fine. I, I had some things to catch up here. It's all right. <laughs> Light reading? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but you have seen The Last of Us show, right? Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. When that was an option, because it was like, I didn't really even know anything about it until TikTok blew up with Pedro Pascal. So then when that was an option to come in, I'm like, all right, let's go check it out. Nine episodes. Why not? I kept calling it This Is Us, though. That's, what I, that's why I never wanted to see it. And then you're like, you know, it's a zombie. I'm like, it's it's. This is us. The zombies come and decimate the family. With Mandy Moore. Yeah. <laughs> She's the first to go. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? it was a video game first. Right. Did you know that, Aaron? I believe my students told me that, but not until after I'd watched the series. But then the mushroom-headed people seem vaguely familiar. <laughs> so. Did either of you play the game? I'm assuming no, but I don't want to assume. Kevin plays things. I, I play things, but I, I think... <laughs> that sounded bad. <laughs> but I, I think the uh, Last of Us it was only available, what, on PlayStation 4 and 5 or something like that? I, the original was put out on 3, but I know they I know there was a remaster on 4, and then I think they put out a, like, remastered version, so, like, it plays as good as Part 2 coming out. So, and I think they did that specifically for the show, so that people could go, like, okay, now, now play it on your PS5 before you see the show. So you, you can complain about the show. <laughs> right. Or or for me, in my case, watching the show makes me want to get the remaster so that I can play it again just to refresh and play it with like play it better, essentially, you know. And the DLC, because like that there's that episode where the best friend slash girlfriend got infected right. and I'd never played that so I didn't know how that was going to play out spoiler alert and so but, I, but that's the thing is I, I don't know how that's going to play out in the game though right because it's still different like it's not hugely different and that's the difference between like this show and other shows that are based off video games is right. this one stuck really close or they just added more like they've made slight changes that really were smarter like they changed the fungus the fungus is different but by the way I have to talk about the fungus they're like hey there's no resist. There's nothing you can do if you got a fungus. Um, I can go get an antifungal from CVS right now for my athlete's foot. Okay, are you telling me there's nothing we can do if there's a, if there's some fungus? I don't know. It's I, I heard that's totally ineffective. Now you just have to pour it in your brain, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> They said that, that, that stuff you buy at CVS, though, just kind of maintains your level. It doesn't really get rid of it. Are you being serious right now? I'm, I'm serious. Any fungal oh, medication is really hard on the body because it, you know, your liver has to process it. Like toe fungus. Have you ever had, you know, any you know, that athlete's foot? Am I crazy? I thought athlete's foot was the crap men got between their toes. But that's a fungus, right? It is a fungus, but you can treat that don't and, know and, this, and you knock way. it back. But if you're if you're dealing with like the toenail fungus, people go get their toenails removed because they get thick and giant and you, you you can't do anything oh you can pour all the tea tree oil you want but 
As far as The Last of Us, we're going to put it in your noggin? What are you going to do with that? I'm shooting up tea tree oil. You might as well. I mean, at that stage of the game. I mean, what do you got to lose? Start clicking. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was a really clever idea, and mushrooms are all crazy now. Everything is mushrooms right now. You got to drink your mushroom coffee. Everybody wants a microdose psilocybin. Mushrooms are everything everywhere right now. So I thought this was perfect. <laughs> To kill that, to kill that fad. <laughs> There's something else to worry about, basically. Uh, but I think they, they were freaky as hell, though, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, but they made a comeback with the Super Mario movie because that's exploded. So now mushrooms are back in. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. It all comes to the down. dark side of Mario Brothers. It's the stuff you don't see. Once they go down the little tunnel, this is what's really going down. <laughs> I actually, I heard a theory, too, that the mushrooms that grow and give an extra life or whatever are actually fungus that grows from the corpses of the other Marios. Oh, damn. Which is like... That's a dark turn. Yeah, I'm like, why would you do... Why would you make us think that or want that? Like, that's that's so messed up. Like, the mushroom all of a sudden turns up and you just see the face underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, but the friendly mushrooms, now we're talking about Super Mario Brothers. There's friendly mushrooms, but there's also the Goombas, the, the racially insensitive nickname for the evil mushrooms that kind of walk around. <laughs> the, Jer the Jersey Shore mushrooms. Oh, no. Okay. Here it comes. <laughs> with this show i felt like they changed the the fungus like yeah it's smarter because they did more research and they're like oh yeah the tendrils and it reaches and the communication and stuff yeah. and that's why they did it but i also feel like they did it because in the game you always put on a mask like anywhere there's fungus and there's spores you put on your gas mask and then you can't see you can't well i mean obviously you're the your character but you can't see their faces so then it would be like that the whole way through, and, and the characters' right. faces would be covered and stuff. But that doesn't seem to... What's funny is that doesn't seem to be a problem for Mandalorian, though. You know what I mean? Like, they go, well, we don't care. This is the way. <laughs> like, right. They'll make this exception for The Last of Us, but then they're like, nope, we're going to stick hardcore for Star Wars, like, to make it more legit. I mean, I thought about that. I mean, you're talking about black molded houses. They're, right. they're covered up nothing. All I can think of was spores. Because <laughs> <laughs> that, And that's the video game. The video game, it's spores. Um, and I actually after watching The Last of Us, I went on in like a deep dive of, I think it's what is it, the ants or whatever? Who gets yes, like a, a fungus ants. on them? Yeah. Right? We're going deep on this. The way they do it is they the spores hit them and they just kind of crawl like a zombie to a place where it's well lit and then just kind of plant themselves. Like they, their manacles grab onto something and then the, the mushroom or whatever comes out of their back and then sprays the spores to get more ants. So it's it's all based on fact. It's, it's science. all based on facts. This is science. This is science. Right. That's why I thought they were most at risk when they were in the forest. Because it's I'm like, where do I see fungus the most? Uh huh. And I'm like, it's in you know those grassy. It's in the forest. It's in those kinds of places. And I'm like, why are they not like being more protective out in the forest? Which is funny because in that same episode, they break glass in the hallway so that if anybody sneaks up on them, they'll hear it. Right. But and I was thinking the exact same thing. I was like, why don't they put something crunchy around them so in the forest? They'll hear if any of those, I, I don't know what to... Because uh, the forest is crunchy. The fungal people, yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, <laughs> right, I mean, but then that nothing happened and then it happened later was what right. they did in that same episode. So I just thought it was kind of funny. It's like, you did it for that later, but you didn't do it earlier. They really didn't do anything, did they, when they were in the woods? They were like, yeah. let's lay out here under the stars and get killed why by zombies. Why don't you just fucking stay there? Just, why don't you just fucking stay there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but with, like, why don't they just stay with that old couple and like, hey folks, you're gonna get old, you're gonna need some help. We're just staying here. Screw this. Yeah. Screw. <laughs> Well, they were trying to deliver. Uh, God. Ellie. 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 They're trying to yeah. deliver Ellie because she's got the, she's got the cure. Right. Basic uh, basic point A to point B video game setup. Because otherwise, they could have stayed at uh, Nick Offerman's like compound if they didn't really care. I mean, he had all well, the stuff all set. Until the go. fluid just dripped down from the ceiling, I guess. <laughs> 
I talk about from their corpses. Oh well. Well, yeah, you have to fumigate, <laughs> obviously. But yes, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Which, uh, I think that's the, the the episode fans were most split on because they got a, they got rid in the video game. There's that interaction between right. Bill and the characters, and and like I said, it's been a long time. It's been two thousand. I played this when it came out, so it's been a long time. So I was like, all I remember is that Bill was a real a hole and he was paranoid and right. he ended up giving him a vehicle and and that was it and like he ended up like doing like this last stand type thing for them we didn't get that we missed that in exchange for this love story they you've seen it in other things shows that are specifically about that but when they throw it in there to like oh this is an apocalypse you know video game thing and I think even the I think I've seen clips of the video game where they're like there was a mention of his partner and it was uh, Frank, but it but they didn't go in depth on it. Right. And I feel like that letter that was in the show, like that's what mainly went in depth on it right there. So what did you think about that episode? Well, first of all, he was simply recreating his character from Parks and Rec. <laughs> thinking about that this is like five years after he's retired from Pawnee, Indiana and now he's set up in his bunker. I thought the relationship at the beginning seemed really contrived and awkward. I don't feel like there was any chemistry but by the end I was kind of like rooting for him. Your soul is hardened dead, is dead inside. I'm, I'm telling you. They had you. no chemistry at the beginning. Well, at the it end, was supposed it was to be awkward. awkward. It was supposed to be like kind of an awkward moment. Well, it well was trust like... me, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. That episode, now you can argue, is like, why are we focusing an entire episode on this couple that we have never really seen before? I don't know anything about. other episodes like that, because it's like the super random, we're going to totally feature an entire, only nine episodes, and the whole one is going to be just on that. So I just assumed it was going to be this this thing all the way through, where you're with them, and this is what's going on over here. But so, no. I mean, that's that's a fair criticism. That's a fair criticism. But I, I'll tell you what, I, I was into it. I was into it as it progressed. By the end, I was into it. I was Absolutely. all scary. I mean, <laughs> even though I knew, because the TikTok was all full of spoilers before I even knew uh, I was going to watch this. So yeah. I already knew, and I was still teary. It was still sad. It was, it was sweet and sad and terrible. And <laughs> You, you don't see that not. on Walking Dead, really. I gotta be honest. I never <laughs> cried during The Walking Dead. That was the worst. I only cried. Why hadn't they killed Carl yet? That That's made all me I cry. cried about. They didn't kill him soon enough. Exactly. God damn it. All those little kids got to go. And I, and I think I read somewhere. Kevin's hardcore. No, no, He no, never no, gave no. up. He never gave up. And then he was Fear the Walking Dead. And then I, was, I don't know. I, I watched Fear one the season. Walking Dead. I watched one season of Fear the Walking Dead. And they said, how about two angsty teenagers? And I said, Double down. I'm out. I'm out. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> Screw you, Mom. I'm out of here. There are That's zombies like, outside. Your fucking ass outside. I'm leaving you for the zombies. God no damn. Sass back one more time. Walking Dead, How it, it's kind of gone off in its own way. I know I didn't play the video game. Uh, I was going to call it This Is Us. The Last of Us. <laughs> We're going to call it <laughs> This Is Us. In, in, in that, game. That was preferred. That's about as preferred. In the game, they go to Pittsburgh, where in uh, the show, they go through Kansas City. Like, that's, that they're not strictly analogous. Like, they're, I, I know they're like, there are different characters that occur in that whole Kansas City story that do not occur in the Pittsburgh story, if I'm not totally mistaken. Right. Yeah. And that was when I started the show, I was like, oh, this is an extended version of the game because they're expanding, you know, the dialogue and all that stuff, you know, that you would do with the show. And right. then as the show progressed, I went, you know what? This, is an ex this isn't an expansion. It's a, it's actually a compact version because they cut out all the all the fighting right like all the gameplay aspects right they cut out because that's like a, that's a huge part of the game that's so, the game right so when you cut that out you're like wow this is actually going to be that's how you're able to do it in one in one season because the game is comprised of seasons right like it's it's done in in fourths in seasons and i was like the, and it seems so long oh i think they're going to do each season is a season and then right. And I was like, oh no, they're cutting out all the fighting. This, 
they're definitely going to be able to fit it in. And, and they do. And like you said, they change certain things. I, a lot of the things, they didn't they didn't bother me. Like that episode, that didn't bother me. I do kind of wish that Bill would have uh, lived so that we still would have seen that interaction that we missed from mm-hmm. the game and still seen like this last stand uh, thing going on too. But we kind of already saw that with Tess. But, but it's, right. I, I feel like it was it, it's elevated though with him. You know, like with her, it, it wasn't as much. Because like he had a fortress built. She was just like, they just had this one explosive and boom, that was it. So I feel like they still could have outdone themselves if they would have done it again. I feel like there is one, there's one complaint though that is, there really wasn't that many, the fungus. The clickers? Right? Yeah, the clickers. Yeah, there really wasn't that many of, of those people there. Right. They cut out, wait, at that point they cut out too much of the gameplay from from the show because when they did show up, I was terrified and it was super intense. And then after it was, after Tess, it just seemed like it, it, it left almost completely uh, and even the end. So, I don't know. For me, it, it was weird because, like I said, I played the game and and I watched the show. I was depressed as soon as the last episode started because, oh man, this is about to get super depressing. And I, it just came upon me. And they brought it though, like so. But what did you think about what Joel did? Because he made the choice for her, pretty much. I don't think this is new in storytelling or cinema. This is the English Patient, where he sells gives the Nazis all the secrets just to try to save his 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 girlfriend in the cave. It's one of those things. Like, I haven't seen this movie, but was it the knock at the cabin? So if me having to choose one of my family members is what is required to save the Earth, then maybe it doesn't need to be saved. If I have to sacrifice this little baby to you guys, then fuck it. Right. If that's I mean, what it takes, you know? Because it's never, I sacrifice myself. It's yeah. always sacrifice somebody who I love the most. Right. That's kind of what they go for. Now, I mean, take, it's a, it's a, you're a parent. You're a parent. Take me. Absolutely. That'd be so Absolutely. much easier if you just go ahead and kill me. Thank you. No. Right. He and he can't tell her. He can't give no. her the choice. It has to Because then There's she'll take lie. it. Right. She she will sag. I mean, theoretically, she may say, "F this, I'm out of here." But theoretically, she starts passing back. You might want to rethink all that. (laughs) Fear like Fear the Walking Dead. Uh, (laughs) Yes, in Fear the Walking Dead, you'd volunteer your teenage children to be experts. (laughs) Um, No, but you can't. You can't tell her because then she'll. But so you have to carry that weight. Hundred percent. You have to carry that burden that you could have saved humanity theoretically. There's situation. no guarantee. There's no guarantee. no guarantee. And quite frankly, why did they had to like remove her whole brain? They couldn't take a, a scraping or something. I mean, no scrapings. On. They make it so final. Like, so we're not even gonna try. We're just gonna like scoop her with a melon ball. And that's gonna be it. Not even, not even make any attempt of something less horrifying. Because if they fuck up, there's nothing to go back to because they've killed her. Right. That's true. That's true. I, one thing I, I noticed is that these these video games are called survival horror, is the idea. So it is kind of, you know, I played a lot of Resident Evil back in the day, and it was that kind of thing, where you're going down the long, long haul, and there are the zombies, and you got to kind yeah. of... There are elements of kind of action in those, where this was much more... You know, it had action moments, but it was definitely more of a character study in my in my mind. You know what I mean? It's like you see the transformation of Joel being like this cold-blooded mercenary. And well, that's what makes it good. Yes. It's, it's the, the character, it's the motivation, it's the arcs and all of that. Otherwise, it's John Wick 4, and it's just, it's three hours long and two of those hours of him getting kicked down the stairs. So let me just say that. <laughs> and three lines of dialogue. Right. And three lines of dialogue. I still love John Wick 4, though. <laughs> <laughs> with kids it changes right when i played it i didn't have kids so right so i was really upset i was like you know what joel needs to die he needs to it needs to come full circle i want to see a part two just to see it come full circle and then i had kids and then re-watching it or or watching it instead of playing it i couldn't make a different decision right now if it was a different family member you know that's a different story but, it was you know, creepy uncle leo you know, like, a creepy uncle <laughs> a, a cousin, you know right. <laughs> absolutely uh, 
But having kids fucks you up. Having kids fucks you up. Before I had kids, uh, do I have to throw a bag full of someone else's children over the wall to the gators? Whatever. And now it's like, ah. No, it's true. <laughs> it, it, it bothers me. It frankly offends me when they have children placed in these kinds of peril in horror movies. And I watch horror movies all the time. It's so I'm like, Because I, I want them to be fun. And if you're putting, like, little children in peril, I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on. Time whoa, 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 that. whoa. For reals. Hey, Eli Roth. You got too far this time. <laughs> <laughs> Eli Roth. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do think though that Ellie like right before they got into the city she was like hey I'm willing to go all the way with this so so that's yep. also why he couldn't just be like well I'm just gonna s stop this and then tell her and then give her the choice because she had already pretty much told him so I, the my biggest fault though is that, that she knew he was lying and he still lied you know that's my biggest problem is that Sometimes you have to, even if you know someone's lying and you kind of want it to be true, you just right. let yourself believe it's true. Just tell her. Like, it's already said and done. Like, you can't change nah. anything. Like, she'll hate you probably, but... No, she'll, she will run away and go back there. You got to double down on that. What? No. They were all dead, so, I mean, there's not... <laughs> <laughs> she pulled the surgery on herself. But, well, but... I mean, the resistance is still around. It probably wasn't a secret. And people are probably going to be looking for her. Well, and here's here's something else that I literally just occurred to me. Like, I don't know, 15 years ago, there was this movie called Man on Fire with uh, Denzel Washington and, uh, what's her name, uh, Dakota Fanning. And it's kind of that similar thing where it's like, here's this old, withered, you know, assassin type, right? But his heart is dead, right? He... A lifetime of trauma has made his heart dead inside. And here's this shining child who's kind of taught him how to love again. It sounds totally cheesy, but that's the thing. It's like she she is, that's she is his child and his savior in a way. Yeah. He can't just <laughs> leave her to, to those devices. His job is to protect her at any cost. Absolutely. Overall, thoughts, feelings on the season? My God, I loved it so much. But I normally I lose control and I just watch it all in one day because I have no impulse control. But I, I knew I had to do because it was dark. So I, I like was doing two, just no break, watch two the next day. I still knocked it out in a week, but uh, it wasn't all in one one day with me just not blinking and my eyes are on fire. <laughs> well, we. We watch a lot of zombie movies, honestly, uh, on our show. So what I always have to tell people with these kind of movies is that uh, other zombie movies you've seen that are full of viscera and entrails, that's not this movie. Really, it's not. I mean, it, it, it really turns people off that are not freaks like us. If you say zombie, well. Right, right. And that, that's not this. This movie really has a lot of heart. It, right. it truly does. Although I have to, I have to add, we haven't mentioned... The crazy preacher who's a cannibal and a pedo all rolled into one. So he's hitting all the bases. <laughs> so. I always have to have one of those. <laughs> Sweet. People are bad. In a zombie apocalypse, people are worse than the zombies. So just understand that and you'll be fine. I mean, that's the way it is now. It's like we're so jaded with zombies these days that the, the zombies no longer are really frightening. Right. So now they got to double down with the real evil. I mean, zombies are these mindless creatures. The real evil, of course, it all comes back to us. Right. No, but I would, I would absolutely recommend this to, frankly, anybody. anybody I try with to convince soul. our parents that, that they were not hearing it. <laughs> Did you really? I did. It's good. It's really good. It is really good. I loved it too. Like I said, as the person who played the game and watched the show, the differences aren't huge. I'm glad that they stuck pretty close. I enjoyed it overall. I don't know about you, but I'm interested and excited for a season two, and they already said there's going to be more clickers. I anticipate I will be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, like we said, it was just some... such a perfect ending. It was, it was great. It truly was. I mean, there was that one moment where all the zombies are coming out of the ground 
And there's that one, what's it, a bloater? Is that yeah. what they're called? Big old crazy oh, dude? Man. I'm like, that's a video game character if I've ever seen one. There's no <laughs> question. That's the big boss. I get it. That's yeah. Big boss. I can't that's wait. Classic. I can't wait. It is great. I'm, I'm not watching it again right now, frankly. Shoot. I've only watched it once, so I'll probably hit it again this summer. But the music was great. You got a little Depeche Mode. Then you have another uh, slower, quieter version. You got that great Linda Ronstadt song. I yeah. love that song so much. Yeah, there's there's a lot of cool stuff. I mean, there's the the brothers too. Like, oh yeah, that was that was so messed up? Even like that too. When I when I I was like I I forgot what had happened, and then as it crept closer, I was like. Oh no! This is gonna go really bad. And it, like I said, it, it's even worse when you have kids. You go like, "Oh my god, no! I don't want. I don't. I don't. I don't want to see this." But yeah, and 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 like you said, with the pedo priest cannibal, his right hand man was the guy that originally voiced Joel. The lady that voiced Ellie, she's the one that birthed Ellie. Right. So she brought her to life in two different ways. That's so, cool. And, and they well, did, she was on Growing Pains, too, back in the late uh, 80s, back by the way. Back in the day, yeah. <laughs> she was, they had Leo, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio on, and then they also, like, oh, by the way, I'm pregnant with a new baby. So that was when they were trying to keep the show going. Yeah, so whenever you, you see, like, new babies or, or weird relatives that come to live with you, a you're a, a, a dog, you know, the ratings are on their way down. Now, in The, la in the Last of Us, when he meets the brother and they're living in that community, did you guys get any, like, a Walking Dead vibes? Remember, at one point, they go into that utopian society, then you find out the big guy has his daughter who's a zombie chained in, like, the closet or something, and it all goes to shit as usual. Everything always goes to shit. As soon as you think you can breathe, then you find out all the people are something. Well, but if you rolled right? in, I was thinking about this. And why would you go to some place that when the snow melts, you're going to get all this mold growth? It seems like you should be in the middle of Arizona. Oh, no awesome. moisture. That's no fair. fungus. The opposites, right? Like either super heat or super cold where it's like, because they move super slow or they can't really survive and thrive in the cold. So you'd have to stay in the cold all year round or stay in the super heat. Or, I used uh, to live up at the Oregon border and I had a pair of leather mock that were in the back of my closet and I hadn't worn them for a while and I pulled them out and they were green. So the was green growing right out of a lot. There were no clickers in some of my <laughs> Were there clickers? Well, there could have been. If it was the, the Last of Us, I must have called This Is Us again. We're just going to call it This Is Us. This is just us. throw away your old it shoes. It's a, it's a message to us all, I think. <laughs> I think we actually, my wife and I made that mistake too and I was like, well, let's just call it this is the last of us. We'll meet in the middle. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the worst, the, the reveal of that town, the worst of it was that uh, that they're communist. Which, for some people, that's that that ended it for them. Like, they go, nope, I'm, I'm out. It's not I'll take my survive. chance with the clickers. Yeah. Right. So. I mean, every, every place... Every place they went to, they were trying out some form of government. We're going to throw off one fashion government for oh, that's true. for the true. rebels who were as extreme. Every, I mean, of course, when people are terrified and panic, that's when all the extreme forms of government, you know. If there are zombies outside, you can be Just a tell me what to do. I'll live Just, with it. Exactly. Just Good tell me what to do. Yeah, that, that's how people seize power. People get scared. So speaking of extreme governments and cults, The Mandalorian. Love it. Season three. That recently uh, finished up. I, I don't know about you, but I, I watched The Book of Boba Fett. I, I enjoyed it. I, I liked it. But there it was... kind of sucked, though, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> but there was two episodes that were legitimately... The Mandalorian. Yes. And and so if you didn't watch that, you were just like, oh, why is he here? And in the show, they didn't really explain it or show a flashback or, or anything. They just were like, oh, he's back with me and that's it. So so how was that as an explanation for, for you? Well, I mean, they, they do that a lot on The Mandalorian where it's like, here's this huge quest. For, and then in the, the first episode of the next season, like, oh, yeah, we're done with that. We're good. Moving right along. We found I haven't finished season three yet. Okay. I'm only halfway through. Uh, but I also have a question about how, how did they take this character Boba Fett, who was so cool, 
when we first see him in Empire Strikes Back, you're like, damn, he is dynamite. And then, of course, Return of the Jedi, he just falls into the Sarlacc pit for no reason. You know what I mean? And now, and now on, on the Book of Boba Fett, he basically gets his ass kicked in every fight he has. It's a, it's a sad situation. Is he cool because we didn't know that much about him? And now that they're kind of pulling back the, the curtain, then it's like, uh, well, actually, the Mandalorian is kind of cooler now. I, it's a multitude of things. I mean, for me personally, I never liked Boba Fett. I never thought he was cool. I always, oh, damn. I always thought he was a joke because he gets taken out by a blind guy into the Sarlacc pit. Now, I read the extended books and I heard he guts out and he... He becomes the leader of Mandalore in the in the books that are no longer considered canon. But in this canon, he survives, which is, it's different, but it works the way that they did it. I mean, I don't know. For, for me, I go like, he's an older guy, and you're passing the torch, <laughs> sort of. And he's, yeah, this guy's not as cool. This guy's cooler because he's the younger, shinier version. And, and that's and that's what they're doing. At the same time, it's like, well, then why did they make him seem so cool in The Mandalorian, though? Like, he was really awesome and hardcore in The Mandalorian in Season 2. Why couldn't you continue that into his own show? And and I really wish they would have done more of that instead of focus on, on The Mandalorian. It was like, why did you give those two episodes up and those should have been right. part of Season 3? And instead, what you should have been doing is, okay, now that he's recovered, show how he's awesome again. Right? Like, show him training with, with all these different beasts. Instead, they just left it alone, and then, oh, oh my god, we forgot about this, he showed up with this beast. And it's like, oh, but he didn't really have control of it, though. It just rampaged the city and destroyed everything <laughs> that he was... It was like, up in your lives! At the same time, it was like... And then he's still, like, the savior instead of, like, the guy that really ruined everything in the end. I still think they could have, I did like how they kind of like humanized him and made him seem like, hey, I want to protect where I'm from, or I want to protect these people. They protected me, you know, and all these things. The idea, they didn't really stick with it. This is failing, so we're going to show this, or, or we're going to set up the next season of Mandalorian in, instead. So Right. I mean, I guess what it comes down to is, do you want your Boba Fett or Mandalorian to be like the Terminator, where every time he faces a challenge, he kicks its ass, like, easily, like a Steven Seagal movie. Steven Seagal never loses a fight, ever. He's he's 60 pounds overweight. It does not matter. He's, he's breaking somebody's arm, right? He's 107. He's, he's 107. pounds overweight. His ponytail's down to just three hairs strung together. <laughs> it's a sad he's situation. He's kicking ass. He's beating the shit out of 20-year-olds. But there's no drama in that. It's really what it comes down to. When that when that happens, then you're just you kind of it gets boring after a while. So you have to kind of make them vulnerable, like you were saying, kind of reveal the humanity of the character. But conversely, if you reveal your vulnerability because you're getting your ass kicked every time you appear on the scene, it, it's a hard you know balance to strike. I, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I I just think it's weird too. It, it's for me. I there's I feel like there's this resurgence or this surgence of stuff going on now where it's like these old men that somehow they are able to just destroy dudes that are that are more than than half their age. Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. <laughs> I'm happy I can jump up to a wall that I could do five years ago. I haven't right. done it. Let me see if I can do this. Yes, I work out every day, or, or not every day, but I work out. You know, I'm consistent. There's no way I. There's no way that that 50 year old me can be 25 me. Like, there's no way. Right. So it doesn't make I mean, sense. You can't jump out of an airplane while doing karate <laughs> when you're 72 years old. When you, you think that's fiction? What? All these movies and shows where it's like nobody and, and John Wick and, you know, all these things where I'm like, Hey, I understand like you have these skills. You just can't beat somebody that's half your age with the same set of skills. It doesn't make sense to me. You have Boba Fett and then you have Mandalorian. And the thing is that in Mandalorian, he still gets beat up. Like the Din Djarin, he, he still does. he falls, he gets still gets beat up, he still loses fights and stuff here and there. And then that's kind of like part of this new season. Just them showing more of this this religion and stuff like that. I mean, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I just feel like you can't outdo Luke Skywalker showing up, which it's like you built two seasons to this, and Luke's Luke Skywalker showing up and just destroying 
these undestroyable robots and stuff. And I'm like, you can't outdo that. Like, how are you going to, how are you going to outdo that? You can't like. Now I read somewhere that that wasn't actually like, that was all computer like generated. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't even like motion capture. It was literally the whole body of uh, Mark Hamill was, was computer generated. Did you hear something like that as well? That sounds terrible. I'm so over that. Bit. So it's, over a that it's a thing. It's a thing. I know like, it is. I know see, it is. In, in John Wick, there are parts where he's in the car and his I see his face and it's tracking the camera. I'm like, this is all CGI bullshit. This is just CGI. <laughs> There's something to be said for, you know, old fashioned stuff. But but it's like Peter Cushing in uh, what was that? Rogue One, when they kept uh, having like dude's been dead for forty years. Can we agree <laughs> that if you're dead, you should be able to just rest and, and Hollywood <laughs> has to stop trying to make some freakish version of you to terrify us all. Started with The Sopranos, I think. That was a bunch of shit. I think they have to get permission from their families, which, hey, you know, I mean, if their families want to profit, I guess that's on them. Great-grandchildren of Peter Cushing are like, hey, send us a check, whatever. Send us a check. <laughs> Kevin, I might have to get you to sign something just in case you go first, and I might just need to... With my chat GBT or something, they can whip up something. Speaking of CGI BS, did, yeah. did you both see Quantumania? I saw Quantumania. I don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> the third Ant-Man movie. Well, it's it's weird to say third Ant-Man movie because there's Ant-Man, then there's right. Ant-Man and Wasp was, was the sequel. And so does this make it Ant-Man and Wasp 2 or does it make it Ant-Man 3? And that's why I just call it quantum mania. Oh shit! And this is this is like a philosophical question we're talking about here. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> spiritually, I, I would say it would have to be the the third of the trilogy. <laughs> Although I have to be honest, I feel like the quality has dipped with each with with each film. I and what, you didn't what did start you with a high mark, if I recall, to begin with. I liked the first one quite a bit. I thought it was a lot of fun. Paul Rudd was funny. I enjoy Paul Rudd. I like when Ant-Man appears in little cameos in other films, other more successful films. That's how I like Ant-Man and Paul Rudd. I actually, I feel like I'm at the point where I need to rewatch a lot of the older movies because when I watched them, I was way more into comics. I was super anal. I was younger, so I like right. cared way too much too. Whereas now I'm just like, you know what? I'm just here for a good time. I'm, you know, I, I don't care. Like, yeah, there was a lack of like, I feel like there's a huge lack of a character arc in this, uh, in this film. Like, yeah, by the end, I but am going to do something Rudd with my life. But character arc. <laughs> Come on, man. First of all, how dare you? You're, you're, you got to lower those expectations. <laughs> Paul Rudd's really good at being Paul Rudd. You're saying he's not Denzel? Is that what you're saying? He is no Denzel. <laughs> but more likable than a Costner. Where were we at? Talking about Ant-Man. Ant oh, Ant-Man, oh, yeah. yes. And his lack of, his, Paul Rudd's lack of character arc and development. Well, I'm, that's the thing is, I is that like his lack of, of acting ability? Because I feel like that's more writing. Because I did, to me, they didn't write it in to the movie and now I know, like people complain about the visuals and stuff. For me, that's for me that's my big bugaboo because I've gotten into writing and, and I'm trying to do writing myself. That I go, where was where was the arc? Like, did anybody real have an arc in this? The the older generation kind of did, but it wasn't big. Like once again, any any character arc or development in this was very small. Right. I, I read somewhere that the purpose of this movie was really to set up the Kang character as being the next big bad like it's it's a two and a half hour kind of post-credit scene it's kind of what they were going for who's kane is that snatch the pebble from my hand grasshopper <laughs> not k-a-n-g K oh he the bat well you didn't see the goddamn movie <laughs> the yeah the, <laughs> but you watched loki season one i'm assuming is that is that correct darren Neither? no for two <laughs> No, she, yeah. He, I at least know who Loki is. Well, Jonathan Majors, it was who was dynamite, frankly, in Loki. He was he was so good. Of course, now he's dealing with all sorts of issues, like in his personal life. So who knows if he's going to be back? The problem is, is that there's, I guess, because of the multiverse, that there's ten million can 
things out there. So it, it's hard to know, is there any connection between this Kang and the Kang from Loki? Or are they totally unrelated? This multiverse shit, it is, it is crazy. This sounds it is worse crazy. Than, than the Young and the Restless. I mean, this, this is pure soap opera bullshit. That, that and then there true. was an evil twin and a weather machine. <laughs> There was a ghost? Absolutely. That's how they, <laughs> I tell my wife, it's like comic books and soap operas are basically the same thing. Yeah. More capes, There's basically. More spandex uh, in the comic book. Well, and, and the other thing, because I, I basically stopped, I was really into comics in the late 80s, and I basically stopped in the early 90s. So it's hard, you know, keeping that in mind, I just find it interesting, the characters that are huge parts of the MCU, uh, you know, huge parts of the Avengers that, in my experience, characters that were not that important to the Avengers in the actual comic books. And, and again, there was, there was a space where things could have drastically changed. Like, Black Widow was not that important. In the, in the comic books that I was familiar with. Conversely, Hawkeye was hugely important. You know what I mean? And yet in the first Avengers movie, he's, he's like kind of an afterthought. So you wonder if, how important is it to adhere strictly to the comic book, you know, backstory? You know, it's kind of like you were talking about with Star Wars. The kind of uncanonical, that's not even a word, canonical? The uncanonical, uh, you know, uncanonizing. Hey, what am I trying to say? What you, when, they, when they change the old stories into being kind of not with within the, you know, the stories. Uh, I mean, this is the same argument as books to movies. I was hardcore Stephen King, so I was in a rage with all the changes in The Shining. That's true. This I is mean, the tale as old as time. <laughs> right. I've come to the point where I've accepted that they're completely different mediums. Yeah. And right. it's updated times. And, and it's, it's not like comics. You can keep the same character for 50 years you can't keep rdj for 50 years you know it's like the guy starts yeah. when he's 50 you can't keep him until he's 100 you know there's no way that's true so exactly. that's so you have to change just based yeah. off of that and just with the times update things what doesn't change is storytelling is character development is character arc. that's true disney has money but they are allocating it all over the place right like oh we're gonna put some to the, the visual, you know, into Star Wars over here and this over here and that over there. So it's like... Indiana see, Jones. Right. You're seeing it in other places and they're going... I, I've even heard they've had issues with that where they go, well, we got moved from this project to this project. So that's why this project doesn't look finished and stuff. And she like, that's why I go, you know what? That's fine. I understand. Well, even that, I go, that's TV. This is TV budget, movie budget. Right. Yeah. It always comes down to me is did the character change and, and the other characters in there? Like, well, of right. course, the main character... But it's like the main character shouldn't be changing the least. And I go like, you definitely could have put it in there and you didn't like that. It just, it seems lazy. It, it wasn't, I don't feel like it was horrible, but it just felt lazy where it was like, yeah, it was okay. Could have been better. Frankly, you know, since Endgame, I've been mildly to very disappointed in every movie I've seen by the MCU. You know what I mean? There was a time where I felt like they could do no wrong. Frankly, even the one people were like, well, that movie kind of sucked. I was like, work for me. I still kind of dug it. Um, Kevin has very low expectations. <laughs> that's a lie. <laughs> that's liable. But it, 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 it feels what you're saying is absolutely true. It's like you feel like the, the, the storytelling has gotten kind of lazier in, in, uh, as time has progressed. And some of that I wondered, was it just oversaturation? Like there's so many projects in the hopper especially if you if you have uh disney plus where you have to and you have to watch every single one of those shows they had like seven shows last year we we're just like gee i mean do i have to watch all even the ones i don't really give a damn about i have to watch those too mm -hmm. i have to watch the cartoon what was it uh the what if i mean does that tie in yeah evidently it does as well <laughs> otherwise you're just kind of like who are these characters who's this surprise cameo you should be able to go back to the basics and tell a good story, have interesting relationships between the characters. There should be an arc of some sort. Hero's journey, perhaps. Uh, journey. And they're not really doing an effective job of it lately. I personally, I, I've, I'm a defender of this phase because to me it's just phase one, but it already has a little bit build already. Movies that were in phase one that didn't really do that well, I go, well, they still had character arcs. I mean, 
Thor wasn't mm-hmm. huge, but it, he started as a doucher, and then he was not a doucher at the end. That's an arc. Thor, Thor was fun. They're, like you said, they're rushing stuff. They're definitely rushing Thor. this thing, and it's like, just spend a little more they time. They want to make money. their money as fast as they can before <laughs> you all lose interest. Before everyone gets too old, too. Like, that's the yeah. thing is, let's get that's actors true. as young as possible, get them stuck in these contracts so we, we own them as long as... Because, like, even, like, Samuel Jackson, it's like, how old is he? And it's like, I think he, I think he had so many under his contract i think he's finally done after secret invasion or, or the marvels or something and i'm like he's 97 years old yeah for god's sake it's <laughs> like man, gonna... <laughs> i don't know he's that old but yeah like you're 70, right he's, he's 73 years or something like that but 97 yeah. he looks great for 97 <laughs> he's doing all right <laughs> uh, they're gonna have to do that kind of the Irishman uh, kind of. Uh, oh face God, thing. that was so terrible. <laughs> Where it's like, here's young Robert De Niro whose body is like moving like an old man. Yeah, it's. <laughs> uh, they're kind of falling into that trap, which uh, affected uh, the DC movies, frankly, like you're talking about, where they're in a hurry. Mm-hmm. We can't, we can't let it simmer on on the on the stove. We gotta throw it in to flame broil it to get it going so we're just shoving as much as we can and that's not uh, that's not a recipe for success truly i'm curious as to what you think of like the new dc universe that they're setting up because the old one's not entirely dead yet right they had there was shazam which i didn't see i saw it well these movies that are coming out they're not part of the new universe unless they do well then they'll go yeah they are even the blue beetle they're like oh hey People look like they like that, like that trailer, but it's like these are trailers. You know, same thing with the Flash. Like, oh, these are trailers. Oh, and and even like there's word coming out. Oh yeah, it's supposed to be the best superhero movie. I don't believe anything that comes out until like the fans see it, the people see it. Like even right. critics, I go like, you know, I don't like because that movie too like was bombed pretty hard, Ant Man, and I was like, hey, it wasn't as bad as you know the critics gave it. And you know, you know what? And shouldn't. Shazam wasn't that bad either. It was, it was decent. But it's kind of like, you know, you're two episodes into a season of a show and they're like, oh, we're canceling it. Then you're like, I don't really care about watching the rest of this season now because you've effectively told me it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's crap. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you're right. You got Blue Beetle coming up. You got Aquaman coming up. Effectively, sitting here right now, they're telling us we've already paid for the movies, so we're just kind of dumping them. We're dumping them out there, and we're starting from scratch with, with a whole new leadership. I, it's going to hurt the films, honestly. It's going to hurt them in a whole host of ways. Kevin Feige said it's like you don't reboot. You don't reboot uh, your characters, right? You kind of you can retcon a little bit here and there as necessary, but it shouldn't be like oh, those other movies, they don't really count anymore. It kind of weakens the whole brand, and I kind of agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. I just, I don't waste my time, because even though, like, they may not be bad movies, you know, even if The Flash does turn out to be the greatest, you know, for my right. own personal reasons, I'm not going to see that one based off of his past. And That's serious, too. Right. The shit he's going through, yeah. That's a thing that's totally up in the air. I go, oh, well, we might switch him with a different actor, but if it does well enough, we're gonna keep him just because he's a good actor, and even though he has all these personal problems and all this bad all this bad past and stuff like Didn't that. Didn't he, like, kidnap somebody? Yeah. I mean, he did some serious shit. He has I mean, numbers. after all the Me Too and everything else, and it still comes down to Hollywood, can we make money off of it? Well, then who the fuck cares? <laughs> he did some shit. I mean, they didn't even release the Batwoman movie. That was I don't a movie know that, who you're talking about. That's, a, Batman, <laughs> that's what yeah. they, they made. They made a, an entire Batwoman movie. And then the new leadership looked at it and were like, uh, this isn't a good movie. We're just going to shelve it. They're putting it in a vault and we're never going to see it. And yet, Flash, full speed ahead. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I do think that James Gunn knows what he's doing. I think everything I've seen from him is is has been really solid, especially when he has that budget, when he has that control, when they allow him to do that. What do you want? People are hating on what Marvel's doing, but I go, yeah, but who's better? Is anybody doing no better? One. No one's doing better. Even with their quality lacking, people mm-hmm. still aren't surpassing the quality that they're at when it's dropped. And and that's the thing is I think they know that too. The people that make money, the people, you know, the people that run it, they go, we're still beating everybody quality wise and money wise. So what do we care if the if the quality's lacking? Until and people keep showing up to the movies. Right. Right. Until that happens where James Gunn goes, watch, I'm gonna put out something better. 
you guys are going to have to step up because competition is the only way that people are going to have to improve. Otherwise, they'll just still, you know, just... You, you have to stop going to the movies, Kevin. You have to start... <laughs> just stop seeing these fucking marginal movies <laughs> and telling me how fantastic they are. I didn't You're see Barbie. You're perpetuating this. like the hate crime of these shitty movies. <laughs> No, the, the, what's funny is, is the the movies that I typically won't go see if they look really lousy are the Sony ones. The Sony, you know, Spider-Man Extended Universe. If if they, I'm like open to seeing them, but if it's Jared Leto starring, <laughs> that's how how does this guy keep getting jobs? Is what I want to know. I mean, he can be the third lead. He's a good enough actor, but it's just like we're putting his face all over the poster. Really? That's what we're doing here, Jared. And Jared, if you're listening, no offense. Not oh, more than some offense. I saw House of Gucci. <laughs> House of Gucci. There's some. There's some offense there. There's a little bit of offense. I'm not gonna lie. Such is life. I don't know. I don't know why he's the darling. Uh, well, I think it's just the Dallas Buyers Club, and he's kind of like he's a... he's burned through that a long time. <laughs> that was like ago. ten years ago. Exactly. What What have you done for me lately? He's a, <laughs> he's a singer songwriter. He has a band that he's in. So it's like I I, I mean I, I don't. He's very know. talented. You know, Everybody yeah. has a fucking band. I'm gonna be in a band next week. Just you wait and see. Well, let me say this. I like James Gunn typically. Typically, I, I, I really I thought Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, was dynamite. Dynamite. Was dynamite. I have to say, I thought the second one was good. Not as was good. It, right. Entertaining on a hot summer day. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> fair. Fair. People loved the Suicide Squad. I was a little disappointed by it. In all honesty. Now, I saw it for free on HBO Max at home, so maybe that affected As my... As God intended. <laughs> As the director intended. Absolutely. <laughs> no question. I'm open to having James Gunn kind of turn it all around. Hey, I love Slither. James, I love Slither from way back when. If you haven't seen Slither, that's James Gunn. He wrote and directed that and starred in it as well. So I'm open to a James Gunn hey, thing going Is that going the down. one with the slugs? Yes! That crawled up the ladies of a JJ in the bathtub? She did not crawl up her vajayjay, first of all. <laughs> but yes, that he he was the mastermind behind that film. Maybe, maybe future films need more of that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be opposed. I mean, not <laughs> out of hand. We'll see. But it, it does make me, it make, gives me pause, especially with the whole uh, Black Adam debacle. How it was like setting up now that may have just been Dwayne Johnson going hog wild but it's like here's this here's this cameo at the end with Superman. Henry Cavill yeah he show now didn't did he quit the witcher because he thought he was going to be back in the movies is that what happened i think so yes so he got he got screwed he quit that that I don't know how I like The Witcher, but he quit that to go back to the movies. Then they're like, oh, just kidding. Sorry. Thanks for the cameo. Adios, muchacho. Even that, I heard that had issues as well, which is yes. he was constantly beefing with the writers for The Witcher because he read the books. And so he'd be like, oh, oh. I should actually go like this. And they didn't want to do it. They didn't want to do it his way, which was the book's way. So he was kind of like wanting an out. So that was his out. Gotcha. I, I think everything's going to work out for him just fine anyways, because he's into all kinds of other stuff like i, I heard he's, he's rich. getting he's getting into like his true passion which is the 40 warhammer 40k series that i think they're doing on amazon or, or somewhere oh, else cool. so i think he's gonna land on his feet considering <laughs> everything <laughs> he's waiting for the man from uncle part two i think if i remember correctly <laughs> well i i want to say uh thank you for joining me i really appreciate for joining me on this on this little quest to talk nerdy what what all do you do on your podcast what do you talk about and cover and get into we're the podcast that wouldn't die we typically talk about horror and sci-fi films mostly horror twist. mostly okay it's probably 80 20 maybe wouldn't you say <laughs> horror to sci-fi i mean in all honesty, more sophisticated to say we also review science fiction we we do <laughs> okay <laughs> Our next movie that we're going to talk about is The Last Starfighter. So we're trying to, to thread it in a little more, if you haven't seen that lately. And we haven't either, so we're going to check that out for the first time in 30 years. Oh, you haven't seen that? I thought that no. would be a pure Kevin thing. It is a pure Kevin thing, no <laughs> question. We pick these movies, oftentimes they're movies from our youth, as you might imagine. And we try... we. 
tend to goof on it because we're trying to be kind of humorous, but I think we're fairly respectful, except for Aaron, maybe. Yeah, I'm not respectful. <laughs> you have to earn my respect. And you're not earning it with some of these films that are coming out. Damn it. <laughs> That's, that's How dare you? We have a good time. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, from from your title, I surmise that maybe like you've been doing this longer than anybody, and I go like, that's why it's the podcast that doesn't die. But if you cover horror, that makes more sense with your title. And two, it's like sci-fi. Like there are elements where there is like that sci-fi horror, like Alien and stuff right. like that, the Survivor sci-fi stuff. Which, which I wonder, like, what did you think of Prey? Oh, I loved Prey. Prey was dynamite. It was, it was uh, Aaron. I don't know if you saw Prey. It was the no. Predator series. But I've it never seen place... any of the Predator films. What did, it took place like 400 years ago. Is that when it was? I'm trying to remember. It was like when it was still kind of the new world almost. Right. Am, am I remembering this correctly? So, but the main character is is a native girl. She's like supposed to be 16 or something like that. And how she deals with the predator of that time. It is, it was an amazing concept. I thought it was so cool. Uh, it's on Hulu. It's still on Hulu. If you haven't seen it, Aaron. It, I do have listeners, Hulu. Watchers, check it out. It is dynamite. I thought it was really excellent. But back to our title, that was a good guess, but that's not why. <laughs> We, we used to have a YouTube series, the B-Movie Club, where we, it, we called it B-Movie, and maybe it started with B-Movies, then it was just random movies, and no one watched it. So, so we quit. We decided we have faces for podcasts, so it was recommended by a nephew, so we resurrected because we will not die. We just keep going. We just oh keep. no, we have a, we have a new YouTube uh, simulcast. So you, if you if you're dying to see what we look like, here you go. Enjoy. You're welcome. Because really, it costs us nothing to just put it out there. How dare you? This is, this <laughs> is a work of art. Kevin's the editor. Okay, awesome. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey Aaron, nothing. <laughs> So, and then if your kids, uh, they, they sign off to use your likenesses, they can continue it on. Like, trust me, they'll like Max Headroom. That, that's the plan. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> that's the plan, yes. <laughs> Good Lord. Awesome. Uh, well, so where can we, everyone out there, find you? We're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We've been doing these WTF videos where we take uh, the craziest scene of whatever movie we reviewed that week, and we put that on TikTok, put that on Instagram. And like I said, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, and we're on YouTube. We're everywhere. There's, there's no escaping us. Beware. Awesome. Okay, do you have any final words? Live long and prosper. I'm going to go see Dungeons and Dragons this weekend. I have full belief that I will hate it, but I'm going to go see it anyway. You will love it. Have you seen Dungeons and Dragons? Honor Among Thieves? No, unfortunately not. It is a lot of fun. I mean, look, as I've said many times before, it is not Shakespeare, but it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. It truly is. You don't and you don't have to be a gamer, an RPG player to to appreciate it. Well, that helps because I really haven't played a video game since I was home after giving birth to my 28-year-old son and I was playing fucking Aladdin on my Sega. Okay. <laughs> Role playing game is RPG. It's a with dice and shit. You know what God okay. Yeah, the tabletop. All coming apart. Tabletop, <laughs> exactly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend it. Uh, check it out. Awesome. So look forward to that for them. For us, it's all TNTM, the show, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, Gmail, Hotmail, everything. Oh, me on TikTok, Pablo Gunner, and uh, talk nerdy to me. <laughs>